I have been racing since January of this year in cross country, roads, track, and sub ultra trails. But next week is the final race of my season. I'm headed back to the trails for the Golden Trail Series World Final. But there's still some training left to do, so here's a full day in the life as I prepare to face off against the best sub ultra trail runners in the world. Good morning. I'm in Connecticut. I'm visiting Spencer's family. We're taking a little stop over here before I go to the World Golden Trail Series Finals. I thought I'd do a day in the life, show my last workout in preparation for the finals, and just, you know, a little bit of good Connecticut fall times. I've been racing since January. I did cross, I did track, I did roads now. This is actually gonna be my last race of the season and then I have a pretty big announcement after that. So I'm excited for it, but it's also a little bit sad. Like the season has been great. I've had so much fun. I don't really want it to end, but obviously at some point the season has to end and I think my body's ready for a break and Actually, my brain really doesn't feel ready. My brain's like, let's go. But this is gonna be the end of my season. So it's a pretty big moment. I'm really hoping to get the most out of myself and put together a performance that I'm really proud of. So the next few days are important. Let's get into it. I get a lot of requests for my pre-run mobility routine, which is funny because I have horrible mobility, but I do this routine every day, so here it is. Tilting forward, stretching my hip flexor in the runner stretch like this, and then I do it like this with my hands down. I'll rock back like this and back up. I turn each direction. I do like circles with my knee. And this one feels amazing. Like, I don't like mobility, but I like this one. Oh, wow. The other direction, like this. Pigeon pose, but I can't do pigeon. Like, this is actually as far as my knee goes. So then I'll like push my knee down like this, forward and backward. And this probably won't like be a stretch for anyone else, but for me, it's very difficult. <laughs> and then I'll tuck my foot under my hips face forward and then lift my back knee. And then I tilt my hip to the side like this. And then I just do it on the other side and that's the full routine. Like it's not very long, but it gets the job done, gets things loosened up. After mobility, I just lightly roll everything out. today is six by 90 second hills, four by 60 second hills, and then one mile threshold. Just getting a little speed, uphill work, followed by some threshold practice, fleshing out that lactate like I'll have to do in the races. So yeah, we'll just get right into it. How was it? Hills <laughs> are so hard. How was the altitude though? Always tough when you don't notice the altitude change, but we did fly all day yesterday. After my last two trail races, I had a couple workouts that focused more on flat speed because I was getting ready for the TC 10 mile. And I'm really glad that I did that because I had so much fun at that race. But now we're shifting the focus back to trails for these last two races of my season that will be very competitive. So three. Halfway done. Nice. So today I'm getting in some hills to work on that uphill power and efficiency. Nice, nice. How are you feeling? So difficult. The grinder, it's grinding me down. Wilton, Connecticut, baby. The grinder, nothing quite like it. It's insanely hard. In most of my races this season, I've definitely felt like the uphills were one of my weaknesses. One more. Last one, I'm so happy. Well, but then you have four more. I'm not thinking about that yet. 
So in this workout, as well as in my off season this year, I definitely wanna continue to focus on hills because even if I'm not doing trail races, being good at hills is such a valuable skill. Hills are just always hard. They're a huge factor in cross country and road racing. And also being able to go uphill and be really strong is just such a good indicator for your overall power and running economy. Oh yeah, one more to go. One more. And I just keep telling myself that just because I'm not good at them right now doesn't mean I won't ever be. I'm gonna go in the woods really quick. Wait, I'm gonna get straight into my threshold. So I have one mile just at like a moderate threshold sort of effort. Nothing crazy, just practicing flushing lactate. Just finished the threshold. It was good. I felt pretty really, like smooth, even though it's a uh, loose gravel rolling trail. So it wasn't that fast. Not many more thoughts. I feel like just heading into a race, I'm always kind of like subdued about a workout because I'm not trying to like look into it too much. Want to take it at face value and just feel good going into the race kind of regardless of anything else. Just finished my cool down. I'm going to bike with Spencer while he runs, but first I'm going to have one of these Chomps meat sticks. Uh, just because getting in protein after a workout is so important for recovery, every Chomps meat stick has 10 to 12 grams of protein and no sugar. Chomps is a minority and family owned snack company that provides high quality protein snacks. Each meat stick is made with grass fed and finished beef and venison and antibiotic free turkey. So it's a great option for a high quality protein snack especially when you are on the go or right after a workout i love chomps because they're super portable like right now i'm about to travel to europe and sometimes when you're traveling it's hard to get enough protein in but when i have chomps with me it makes it really easy to always have quality protein source in my backpack or my bag wherever i am chomps never contain soy dairy or artificial nitrates and they also come in multiple flavors such as original and jalapeno so let me know in the comments which flavor of chomps you think sounds the best and check out my description for more. recorded our podcast. I think it was episode 10, Spence. 10 episodes, yeah. Woo! And now we're taking Georgie on a little walk. So I'm gonna start walking quickly and then Allie's gonna let Georgie walk quickly. Let's see if Georgie will really fight to keep that lead. Let's see how competitive he gets. Oh no, he's looking. <laughs> He's running. He's running. <laughs> After the cool down, I went and did a quick lift in the basement. Right now, I'm not doing anything too heavy because I don't want to be sore at all heading into race week. So I started the workout with my mountain legs routine, which is just step ups and reverse lunges. And then I did some squats and some more explosive exercises. And then I just finished it all off with a little bit of core. Well, Allie has a competitor downstairs. <laughs> Not competing with her. <laughs> He's got a good cadence. Lift is done. I'm showered, clean, and feeling good. That's a pretty standard day. I'm just going to eat dinner and relax now. Obviously, there's some stuff that I don't show between, you know, filling in the gaps and stuff. But workout days are pretty focused on just the workout, the lift, recovery, getting in good food. I'm going to be heading to the Golden Trail World Finals in just a couple days. I'm excited and nervous for it. I feel like trail races are just really hard for me. I actually talked about that on the podcast today. So I know going into it that it's going to be like probably one of the hardest races of the year. But that's also a good thing because challenging myself is such a privilege and it is something that I absolutely love to do. So I'm excited for it. Switzerland is beautiful and there's a lot of really good cheese. So lots to look forward to. Yeah, that's all for now, folks. Mm -hmm.